you and say, look, you learn more from your failures than from your successes. Specifically, in some ways, this has some resonance with So, let's say a friend calls you up and invites you to an art fair. Let's say this art fair is happening in a big place like the Messe Munich. Well, you don't know much about art, and you've never been to an art fair, but it's your friend, sounds kind of cool and interesting, so you say, what the heck, let's go. So you show up, and you don't know what to expect, but it's as if the Louvre has just kind of exploded all over the Messe Munich. It's not just wall to wall full of art in that fair, but it's top to bottom full of art. And then there's hundreds of these makeshift walls in between the actual walls, and that's all full of art as well. So every step you take has a new image. It has a new color, new shadows and shapes, maybe new expressions and new emotions. It becomes very overwhelming, especially for a first timer. And as you walk around and you start to feel like a zombie, it, your brain starts to get a bit maxed out. So when you pass one of those makeshift walls that have this artwork on it, you don't really know what it is. You're kind of looking at it. You say, yeah, it looks like a photograph. There's light behind it, but I don't really get it. What's literally standing out from the wall is the artist. And this is Max Zorn. And Max Zorn goes to all of his exhibitions and all of his art fairs, and he performs live for good reason. He has his easel, he has a light box. Usually there's a crowd that's formed a half circle around him, so you can't even really make out what he's doing at this point either. Looks like he's got tape, but maybe he's just fixing something because something broke. So what ties it all together is a third element that's usually around nearby. And it's a video, a fast motion video, and this is what it looks like. by this time a spark has gone off in your head and you say whoa that guy is this guy and this guy is making art out of tape so everything on that wall is that also made out of tape and then someone like me is around saying everything you see here is made out of brown packing tape in case you hadn't gotten it already the artist uses a scalpel he adds layers and layers of brown tape that when illuminated from behind create an artwork and you think to yourself, I 
I hope. Brown tape is art. Wow, that's so exciting. But why is tape so exciting? Usually when this spark goes off in people's head, they have three questions. How long does it take to create a tape art? How many rolls of tape does it take to create a tape art? And how did he come up with that idea to make tape art? Well, we don't really have concrete answers to those questions. How long does it take to make a tape art? Well, um, some of the ones that you'll see will take up to four weeks or longer. Today, he's going to try to make a, a record by doing it in 10 minutes. How many rolls of tape does he use? Also depends on the size and the detail. It can be a few rolls, can be a few dozen rolls. And finally, how did he get the idea? This one behind me is also an image of his tape art, and here's another one. So Max Zorn, as his manager, I know, never went to any prestigious art school. His dream was to never become a tape artist, and he doesn't study tape the way a classical pianist might study Bach or Beethoven. The idea happened simply out of inspiration from his hometown, which is Amsterdam. And if any of you have been to Amsterdam, it's a very nostalgic place. There's a lot of brick and historical buildings, and especially at night when the light is shining on the canals, it's all very romantic. And somebody like Max, it was a very inspirational setting to create street art for the night. So he played around and experimented a little bit with tape, with different elements, the scalpel, the plexiglass, it kind of all came together. And before we knew it, we were watching him climb up street lamps around the city and put up his tape art on the lanterns. So he tagged the city of Amsterdam with the, with the street art and the tape. And then he went to Lisbon, he went to Berlin, he went to Paris. And as he traveled around, people kept asking him, how do you make that out of tape? So he got a little bored of that and he created the video that I just showed you. And it was only a matter of time before a French network picked it up, televised it across the country, and overnight this video sort of rolled on to the rest of the world. He woke up the next morning, he had over a million views on YouTube, he had thousands of emails in his inbox, and he became this overnight, full-time tape artist. And instead of explaining people how he does it, now he has to explain to airport security why he's always traveling around with a backpack full of brown packing tape and scalpels. <laughs> so, one thing that we've noticed after became, he became a full-time artist, was that, um, yeah, he had no time to really climb up street lamps anymore. He had these big commission works to make, and he had clients. So we immediately started a project called Stick Together. And Stick Together was a project that spread street art for free to fans across the world. The idea was very simple. You go to the website, you sign up, and hopefully you win a handmade piece of art. But it didn't stop there, you had to go through the whole gag. So if you got a tape art, you had to walk around your city at night. You had to find a place where light shines through in the pub public eye that could be a street lamp, could require climbing up a lamppost, but not always. And for proof, you had to send us a photo to make sure you did it, and we put it up on the website. And in the first few weeks, we received thousands of emails. And I think it's because a lot of people had a draw that they had a chance to be a street artist for a moment, even if they were never an artist themselves. So what we realized with Stick Together and Max Zorn is that there is a wow element, we can call it a wow facet, to tape art. And this wow facet is very wide, and it's led to other facets that we didn't really expect or we, see com we saw coming. And one of them is the street art aspect. Not only is it made out of tape, but it's one of a pioneering form of street art for the night. So there are no walls here to create murals. There's no paint. And the art is incognito by day and only visible by night. And it's also very transportable to the fans, to a larger audience that likes street art. And that's something very unusual to be able to get the art so close to the fans. The second aspect that we saw that we didn't expect was tape art as a, as a sort of 
eco idea, and I don't mean because brown tape looks like it's bio-friendly. I mean more in terms of taking something like tape art and applying it to the idea of upcycling. Some see Max Zorn tape art as a way of taking something ordinary or something boring and then lifting it up to a higher level to make it look more wonderful and more beautiful. And we've seen this facet in upcycling events that we've done around Germany. And this image is of a giant piece that he did in one of the largest music festivals, South by Southwest, to promote one of their satellite conferences that has to do with eco-design. And the third aspect that we saw was that tape art brought an excitement to areas that don't normally emphasize art in the way of art museums, art schools. We especially saw this in parts of the world that are focused on going forward in the digital and the technological industries. So we were able to tap into a very uh, unlikely demographic, whether it be generations or national media in places like Thailand, places like Dubai and like China. So this wow facet, wrapping it all together, what we saw was a bridge that was happening from tape art. And this bridge was coming from the art world and bridging over to a larger, global, more general public. Tape art is a great thing in the art world. We've seen a lot of positive feedback in exhibitions that we do, and the events, and museums, and curators. But what we find fascinating is that when we show at places like the Messe Munich and big art fairs, we bring in the art collectors and the art lovers, but we also attract the security guards that work at the venue, people that have never been to an art fair before people that have never bought art before in their lives, they become our clients as well. And we think it has to do with this wow factor, this spark that goes off in your head saying, I don't have to be art smart in order to, stand, to understand what's happening here, and I don't have to necessarily get art to know if I like it. And so we hope that we can continue to bring this positive environment and this excitement to a larger general general audience, and uh, through Tape Art and through Stick Together and through Max Zorn, we continue to bring the art world into the real world. And uh, I guess we'll always rely on packing tape being readily available. And uh, to give you an idea of what the art looks like in real life, So, Max, you had 10 minutes to create an artwork. How'd it go? Well, I'm not sure. It's definitely not the best artwork I ever made, but I hope it was enough time, though, to show you a little bit about the process I go through and show you what fascinates me about working with uh, such an exotic material like, like tape. Um, one aspect of that fascination is all the you know, unexpected things that happen along the way. Um, it's good to have an idea, it's good to have a concept, it's good to have a plan when you start an artwork, but, you know, it gets you only so far. Working with tape, with all these weird shapes and straight lines, it's, it's rather like a musical jam session, actually. You know, you got a topic, you got a theme, but then it's up to your mood, it's up to your ability to bring in all these different layers and incorporate all the... Uh, yeah, coincidences that happen along the way into one final composition. And that leaves me as an artist at a weird spot. I have like a passive and an active role at the same time. So while I'm creating, I'm also watching how all the snippets and pieces and layers come together as one composition. And it's all somehow held together by these shades of the beautiful sepia tone the tape comes with. And that tone dips the entire artwork in an yeah, almost nostalgic atmosphere. But what fascinates me the most, I have to leave that beautiful carpet for a second, what fascinates me the most is this year, actually. I show it again. It's like the transformation that happens when tape interacts with light. 
Like the fact that one additional element, the light, changes everything we knew about that sticky stuff here. And I feel that doesn't only apply for tape or tape art in that sense, but touches the broader issue of art. As art, at least how I see it, takes the world and you know, chews it up and spits it out again as a, as a new narrative. And that enables us to see things which are you know, around us, which are in front of our eyes all the time, in a completely different light. Thanks.